one of the strongest storms to ever make landfall in recorded history has hit the Philippines. Earthquake in Haiti, a 7.0 magnitude, uh, in uh, only about 10 or so miles from the capital. The death toll from flooding in Myanmar rises to 69, with more than 250,000 people affected. Janvier 2010, il était 4 ans après-midi, alors 4 et 53 ans après-midi. Haïti a commencé à secouer. C'était un tremblement de terre de magnitude 7.3. Mais, nous n'avons pas de tremblement de terre dans le pays pour plusieurs générations. Ça fait nous pas de qui ça dit. Pour nous, c'était tout le monde qui a secoué pendant 35 secondes. Ça. 35 secondes. Ça a été changé pour tout le temps. Environ 300 000 personnes mourir. Environ 1,5 million de personnes déplacées qui étaient la taille. Sans compter des gars matériels qui évaluaient à plus de 12 milliards de dollars. Pour tout le monde, capital pays a été perdu de visage. Tout le monde a été perdu de visage. Tout le monde a été perdu de Dommage physique pays d'Haïti, il n'y a pas de caméra imaginaire. Sans nous pas compter la vie mon sans nous pas compter moi et vivre mon yo, si nous pas qu'à quoi terre qui est en papier, maintenant qui ça? It was November 8, uh, 2013, when Super Typhoon Haiyan made landfall in the Philippines. It brought horrific sustained winds of 195 miles per hour. And the most deadly thing about the typhoon was the storm surge. It came in a rapid manner. I mean, it's 20-foot storm surge. That is really the main cause why a lot of people were killed because it ravaged communities just like a tsunami. The extent of devastation is unspeakable. Well, 16 million Filipinos were affected from 44 out of the 80 provinces in the Philippines, just like half of the entire Philippine archipelago. According to government reports, more than 6,000 people were killed. I work a segment producer for 24 Horas, that's one of the biggest nightly TV newscasts in the Philippines, and I'm regularly assigned to covering disaster stories. And I'm supposed to be sent there before the landfall of the typhoon. It's just that my own community was also part of the path of the typhoon, and I'm personally worried about my mom, that's why I asked him not to send me right away. Well, flights were being cancelled a day before the typhoon. Three days after the landfall, I was already there, documenting stories. It was very traumatic for me as well. I've seen people hurt each other for food. I also experienced lifting cadaver bags. My team was surviving, eating biscuits and canned foods for the entire first week. And we were also sleeping beside displaced victims in a ruined building in Tacloban City. There was no electricity, no communication lines, no internet. It was so hard, and right now I can't even tell you how I managed to, to stay there for one month to document stories for a nightly newscast. Well, the recent uh, flooding disaster happened in Myanmar. It happened in mid of July 2017. And uh, in middle of, uh, at that time, the heavy rain started, and also a lot of uh, raining happened in all over the country area, which is not uh, normal. 
and most of the area is in the north side of the Myanmar. In our country, there are total 14 states, and it's affected to the 12 states. So the government does declared this one as a very worst disaster, and the death rate is almost 100 over 100. And the whole country is affected by this flooding disaster. And because of this flooding, it destroyed a uh, house and also the agriculture farms. It, it destroyed a lot. Façon de constater bah quand les mandataires c'était un lot désastre qui était arrivé. Gouvernement haïtien était déjà très faible. Désastre très faible vient plus faible toujours. Presque toute building l'État a été tombé. Plusieurs centaines pour ne pas dire plusieurs milliers emplois et l'État a perdu la vie. Ça a fait l'État non en vie plus plus faible. Après tant de mal. C'était international là qui contrôle toute bagaille. Toute bagaille. C'était international là. Nous capable de changer ça clair. Aide international là pour nous, il était presque pas être tant qu'on le désastre. Parce que était un problème de communication, de collaboration entre groupes, entre secteurs. Mais nous avons comprendre tout qui ça qui la cause ça. C'est choc tremblement de terre qui mettait l'état à genoux population à genoux et tout le monde t'attend c'est seulement international là qui a vraiment porté aide et ça t'a fait tout le monde qui presque campé avec nous t'a voulu aider à ici mais façon intervention que t'a fait là c'était comme si il y a un autre pigo désastre qui t'est arrivé parce qu'il t'a créé un pile en pile problème un pile en pile des autres after the landfall the government relief operations were delayed and well, there, there were a lot of problems that surfaced. Well, our leaders are blaming each other about the lack of preparation and organization on the ground. And there, there's massive political bickering, and there, there are issues on the mishandling of relief goods, and the government was widely criticized for that. It was very chaotic on the ground. The fact that relief goods were delayed, there were massive lootings. People killed each other for food. The international community really wept with the Philippines and help started pouring in. NGOs and the UN also organized their own donation campaigns. And according to donor documents of the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism, around $600 million of donations were received by the Philippine government from 58 foreign countries and the European Commission alone. I believe the international aid government response is not good enough and not fast enough. You know there are a lot of gaps between the international help and the accessible accessibility of the people who's in the ground. Because the information system is very low and they don't have a clear information flow from the aid to the the people who is the victims who is in the ground. From the government side, I think it is uh, they had some delay to respond to the disaster. And for the international aid, I we've had a lot of news and we see a lot of figures that coming, but we don't have we I don't see clear picture. It states that uh, how the donation and how the aid is progress in progress. We're not ready for this disaster, and we didn't get any information in advance that the disaster is coming. So, I'm so that all the world is mobilized to help us. It's been a lot of promises that have been made. Over 5.6 million dollars of promises have been made in response to the problem of the terrorists in Haiti. Today, I'm going to say, after 5 years, we have always had people who live in the city. Nous toujours gagner un monde qui vit dans des conditions et foi humaine. Nous pas de cas quoi ça. Et gain possibilité si gain tremblement de terre pour nous plus toucher, pour nous gain plus problème, pour qui ça Parce que mon yo prend même reste bloqué, même reste fait tremblement de terre, 
pour construire. Parce qu'il y a des problèmes économiques, des problèmes de planification dans le pays. Si nous prenons par exemple Canaran, Jérusalem et un pilote toujours, le transformer en ghetto. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de différence entre ghetto et façon dont nous vivons dans des zones sales. Pour moi, c'est déjà un gros mal à sur le pays d'Haïti. Et mais ça, tant que je quitter pour nous comme résultat. Difficult to fathom what has become of Haiti and of the United Nations in this country. For the United Nations, this tragic event was the worst in its history. Nous sommes allés dans la même ligne, même j'ai avec le président à l'époque, le président René Préval. À cause de l'état, c'est tellement faible, presque pas de aucun contrôle qui est gagné sur le gouvernement ou bien sur la réponse. L'état essaye de faire pas international là, et parce que ça a fait pas international là, pas de trop de monde vraiment qui comprend ce qui a passé, et nous pas dit vraiment que c'est un qui a une réponse parce que les gens qui sont victimes, ils sont toujours victimes. Right now, thousands of people are still homeless. They're stuck in the temporary shelters, which are poorly managed. Um, in June, I was documenting a family in one of the temporary shelters in Tacloban City, and the mother that I interviewed was actually telling me that her, her eight-month-old baby was regularly getting sick inside the poorly managed bunkhouses and she feared for her daughter's life. Her story is a reflection of how vulnerable all those disaster victims to abuses and to diseases in poorly managed temporary shelters. And right now, government rehabilitation projects for uh, school buildings are also pending. Kahit po mainit, nagsisikap pa rin po kami sa pag-aaral kasi po para rin lang naman po sa amin yun eh. Based on my experience, I will dare say that the government was grossly inefficient. Our leaders are stuck in debating the plans. The projects are stuck in our bureaucracy. Projects do not roll out quickly. There is no proper coordination. And it is so apparent that the aid organizations working on the ground do not have the capacity to prioritize and operationalize plans. Uh, you see, I had this very funny experience when I went there in Tacloban City, and we went to see this um, housing site, a few model houses were existing, but there is one colorful house being well, established at the center of the, of the barren housing project. And we asked, what is that? And they said it's a, a women's center. I mean, why are they prioritizing constructing women's centers when there are still thousands of people homeless on the ground? There are a lot of there are a lot of displaceable. They they are staying in the rent along with the road, and they are totally displaced from their original area. Some of the villages that I have seen in person, and I talk to them, they are not willing to go back to their original place because they feel, they feel like it will happen again. The government side, they are doing the recovery project. Based on my understanding, they stayed in the state media and also they do the. They declare a lot of information that they're doing the project. But for me, I work in the field in person and I feel that it is not good enough. I believe that from the government side, they still have a lot of bureaucracy and paperwork. Corruption. There is corruption on all the lines. On all the points, on all the sectors. There is almost corruption on all the levels, on the ONG. Tant qu'on problème coordination entre eux, ils ont fait même travail en même temps sans ne pas continuer l'autre l'a fait travail ça. Nan niveau communauté a tegen problème tout. Nan niveau l'état, problème passivité, négligence. Tout ça te cause population a a rentrer non problème profond en dans communauté. Et tegen problème leadership qui t'est posé. Si tu as distribution, 
distribution tap, distribution manger, distribution de l'eau. Tout le bagage ça a été qu'on mène en pile en pile conflit dans la communauté. Actually, a lot of our government disbursements are questionable and unexplained. Transparency reports and data releases from the government are are inconsistent and most of the time conflicting. Well, every response is tainted with politics. Based on my experience, I have encountered a lot of cases where politicians tried maneuvering the release of aid. They did not release aid to communities that did not support them during the elections. Because of the massive corruption that happened on the ground, disaster responses were not that efficient at all because like everything was motivated by by something else but not help we have seen some photos that um the donation from the un they have a lot of cut on spots coming in with the logo of un and the government one of the state government they just print out their name and like they put in the uh, box like donating from this government or something like that. I believe there will be there will be a corruption in this kind of response of this is uh, because no information open for the all of the all of the channel, all of the community and all of the civil society. Pour voir les gens qui nous perdent, pour voir les gens qui victime, l'État est supposé une opportunité pour nous changer le pays. L'État est supposé un moment pour pour rassembler confiance, pour mettre les gens ensemble. Nous pensons que nous échouer. Nous échouer parce que ça n'a pas arrivé fait. Nous échouer parce que nous avons plus de division dans le temps. Nous échouer. Tout gouvernement échoué. Thinking about it, you know, it's actually frustrating for me. It makes me so upset because having documented like hundreds of stories on the ground for the past two years in Tacloban City, in Leyte and Samar, it pains me every time to go back there and see what well, the people I did stories about in the same condition. And I always thought that they don't deserve that, given that the international community gave help. The love that all these people gave them should be felt on the ground. And they deserve better. They deserve just and timely aid, not the kind of aid that is available when all our leaders are done with their debates. I want to share about the, this experience and also uh, well, I, I'm thinking uh, what we can do in the future as a civil society or as a part of the society or as a young team members of the, the community we should have a proper management system about the disaster management and also we should have a network to share the information Le théâtre est réveillé conscience en pile dans nous. Le théâtre fait nous penser à qui on l'autre des mecs pour pour on l'autre Haïti. Après l'événement ça, moi-même avec quelques autres amis te mettez ensemble pour te mettez camper. Il y a un mouvement social qui est le combat sur les débats. Mission mouvement ça, c'est pour identifier, connecter, jeunes ensemble, aider à apprendre comment pour vivre ensemble. Yon manière pour yon gen plus transparence pour combattre corruption qui servi yon cancer dans le processus de reconstruction du pays d'Haïti. Et nous pensons que c'est celle l'autre génération de leaders avec conscience qui a reconstruit le pays. Parce que la solution du pays d'Haïti, c'est celle nous-mêmes qui gagne. C'est Haïtien qui and uh, I would like to I would like to encourage the civil society and other organizations also to prepare a proper disaster management program. And in myself, in our organization also, we are planning to have a disaster management plan 
we're working on that and uh, we would like to share to the other civil society as well. It's about time people talk about corruption and disaster responses and this is actually what we are doing. Because you see, people maybe know about corruption and disaster responses, but it's not something that we talk about every day. It's about time we talk about this. I mean, I always say that there's so much nobility in disaster relief. People heeded the call for help. And all the donations, I mean, the, it's not about money. It's not just about money, but the donations actually symbolize kindness humanity, but it is so sad that there are some people who could afford to steal from traumatized victims. And donors should know that their donations are being stolen. And disaster victims should feel more entitled for the aid because it's their money channeled through the government. It's their money. It's your money. You should have the right to ask the government for your money because that's your money. Young people should know that we can do something about this. Like with social media, we can initiate discussion about this and create awareness and, and let the citizen action start from us, from young people, because we have the power to do this. <laughs>